Amen, amen. Blessings, everyone, on the line. Thank you, uh, Brother Finley um, and uh, Sister Carmen for inviting us once again on to the uh, personal ministry, Alms of Mercy Bible uh, study line. Uh, it is such a blessing to be with you guys. Uh, it is important to note that it's not by accident that we are here. Um, as we speak to you right now, I um, have been greatly impacted as the seasons are soon to change. And, you know, and as the seasons are changing, some of us may have some seasonal allergies. So if I sound a little different on tonight, uh, my apologies. Uh, uh, my apologies um, as uh, that we're praying that the Lord will allow me to allow us to um, his word to get across to everyone with that being said we're going to go ahead and pray as we're going to take just a quick recap um, on what it is that we have studied thus far as we prepare to study on our message on tonight so let us pray first father in heaven we thank you so much for this day and for breath within our being we ask lord that as we come on the line on tonight that you may be in the midst, that your Holy Spirit may open our hearts and our minds, that we may hear and receive the message that you have for us on today, so that our homes may be restored, that our marriages may be reflective of the ideal that you have for it, that we may have healthy and happy homes and have heaven here on earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Um, so thank you again. Um, this. So what we're going to do on this evening, um, we are, the topic for this evening, as we all know, for the series that we've been, you know, for our family being on the line, is the committed marriage, a covenant blessed by God. And on tonight, um, we are talking about the wife and the help me. Uh, last time we were on, my husband was speaking majority of the time we touched on the the husband and the priest. Was there something you wanted to, to mention before we continue on? Sure, definitely. Let's go ahead and lay the foundation once again. Um, on night one, um, on Tuesday of last week, we discussed how in um, the committed marriage, a covenant blessed by God, the first step in order to have a successful marriage is that we must first be committed to God. We recognized and went over several points for those who may not have um, heard it. Please go back and listen to the uh, recording. But we're just going to give some bullet points is that first we uh, recognize that we must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of us to diligently seek him. And so when we seek the Lord, then the Bible says that we will find him when we search for him with all of our heart. Point number two is that we get, need to get to know God through his word. We need to spend time and commune with him. The Bible lets us know that faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of the Lord. So we need to understand and immerse ourselves in the word so that we can come to a greater knowledge of him. Point three is that we then must need to be obedient to the knowledge that you have. When God gives us this message, or when we hear God's word, then we must obey it. It's through our obedience that we can obtain um, the Holy Spirit. The Bible lets us know in Acts chapter 5 that the Holy Spirit is only given to those individuals who obey. And uh, we recognize that when we hide God's word in our heart, it keeps us from sinning against him. The God says that now unto him who is able to keep you from falling. So we recognize that God is able to keep us from falling. So therefore, we must be obedient to his word. And we also must confess and forsake our sin. When we recognize that we have sinned and we're against, uh, uh, done that which is against God and his will, then we must confess it and we must repent of it. And then from there, we must forsake it, which means that we turn away from our sin and last but not least, we need to trust God to keep us from falling, as we just spoke about. And then on uh, Thursday of last week, we discussed the husband, the role of the husband. And we defined the husband being as being a house man and also being a priest of the home. And we started off by saying that the, father and mother, the, uh, the husband must leave father and mother and cleave to his wife, and they shall be one flesh. That is very important because there's a lot of outside influences that affect the home. The husband is the head of the household, and the devil is seeking to attack the head. He knows that if he can damage the head, then he can damage the rest of the body. And so we see the importance of the male in the home, of the husband in the home. It says that we should be kindly affectionate to our wives and to other individuals and to the house that we should have soft answers because soft answers turn up away wrath, that a married heart doeth good like medicine. So we talk about our communication, that we should have all love 
and sympathy, that we should uh, tend to the affections of other individuals in the home. And um, as the priest of the home, you know, we must actually be the mediator between God and our family. We must, have, in the morning time, uh, lay up the morning and the evening sacrifice so that our families may be presented towards the Lord, right? And also that the husbands are the lawmakers in the home, and that where there is lawlessness, there is recklessness and chaos. Again, we said that where there is lawlessness, there is recklessness and chaos. And that was just a brief synopsis of what we went on over the last two nights. And so as we uh, start on to tonight, and so as we speak, pick up on tonight, we're going to speak on the, the wife, the role of the wife, and the role of the help me. Amen. We start, want to first start off and just say that in Genesis, if you all have your Bibles, I encourage you to turn uh, with me um, to Genesis, and we're looking at um, Genesis 1.28. <clears throat> And it says here, and God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, um, and have dominion over the fish of the sea. This is not the one I want to see. Um, I've got my text in the But anyway, I, this is what I want to, to, to say as I am pulling up the, I must have wrote down the wrong text, my apologies. Um, but I want to talk about how God, made Eve for Adam, and then he blessed their union. And so when he blessed their union, he intended for the two to become one. And while I'm pulling that up, I'm just going to jump over really quick to Adventist Home. Um, Adventist Home, paragraph, chapter 99, page um, 99, paragraph 1, tells us that God's purpose for the husband and wife says God made from the man, a woman, to be a companion and help me for him, to be one with him, to cheer, encourage, and bless him. He, in his turn, to be her strong helper. I just want to pause right there. So we see here that when God brought Adam and Eve together and blessed their union, they were, Eve was to be a helper, a help me, to be a companion. And to and this companionship uh, is is nothing more than just um, you know, or I should say, everything that deals to build up, to support, to cheer, to encourage. Words of encouragement should come from the wife. You know, I'm telling you these things based off of really my testimony of implementing implementing these rules um, or these these reading uh, counsel and and also practicing counsel. So seeing that it was God's idea to be a help me, meaning to cheer, to encourage, and to bless my husband. And in, it says in, his, in turn, he is to, to be her strong helper. That means that he is to be really a protector. Um, and so as the wife in the, uh, as the wife and as the help me, you know, I am to fulfill everything there to not be belittled, <laughs> um, God didn't create us women to be, um, you know, belittled. And the reason why I use that word belittled as we go a little further, we'll see that there's a text um, in Ephesians that speaks to, you know, being submissive. You know, I know a lot of uh, women have a, a, you know, have challenges hearing, you know, being submissive um, or the word obey. And, and when we hear the word obey, we have to read it in context and understand what does God mean. God didn't mean for us to just, you know, it's not enslavement. It is, it is not enslavement. It is to, you know, to help. Um, it is to, to be a help meet to the, to the spouse, to the husband, and to respect. Really, when we hear the word obey, we're really looking at what God's ideal is to respect the husband. Why is that? Because the husband is the head. The, the husband is the priest, as we learned on last week. The husband is the priest. The, the priest is the stand-in, um, the representer, or should say a representation of, yes, representative, thank you, honey, the representative of uh, Jesus, because Jesus is, on behalf of us, 
doing the very things as a stand-in, you know. So the husband is a is to be. Hold on one second. This is distracted with this. Okay. So Jesus is Jesus is in the most holy place, and he is serving as our high priest. And so as we look at the husband, the husband is also is a stand-in, a, representer, a representative on behalf of the wife as well as his family. So we are to respect as the leader of, um, of, our, uh, of the home, we are to respect the priest, respect the husband, and, and respecting the husband because that's God's ideal. We are then respecting God. So if we're not respecting God, I mean, respecting our husbands, if we're not taking into account to what our husbands uh, are saying, then we are not living God's ideal. We are not respecting what God's wishes are because he has placed, you know, and that's talking about godly husbands. I want to want to clarify that. It's not talking about, you know, God doesn't in, expect us to, to follow, I should say, an ungodly husband. You know, they're, they're really, you know, uh, what's the word I want to say? Um, yes, there's, 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 there is a, there's a standard that God does have, and he is, expects his children to, to follow. And so if we're talking about, you know, because we do have the thing about being unequally yoked and whatnot, but this is why God said to not be unequally yoked, because being unequally yoked would mean that there would be a breach in the law, a breach in what God's will would be. So speaking about the wife that is submissive to the godly husband, as the priest, we are to respect uh, the decision-making process, you know, whatever that may be, um, as the husband is being led by God. We have to trust that our husbands, our spouses, are being led led by God. And so that is uh, what that particular um, principle is speaking to. I do want to go to uh, finish that paragraph in Adventist Home where it says, all who enter into matrimonial relations with a holy purpose, the husband to obtain the pure affections of a woman's heart, the wife to soften and improve her husband's character and give it completeness, fulfill God's purpose for them. So here we are, we have it, um, my sisters my, uh, who are married, um, you know, God is telling us right here that, you know, he has placed us in the lives of our husbands in order, you know, to uh, soften their hearts and to improve upon. When we say improve, not that, oh, yeah, he needs us, but <laughs> when God says, you know, uh, improve upon the husband's character by love, you know, we are to help our husbands. We're actually supposed to help one another make it to heaven. But we, you know, speaking to the wife, the mother, I mean, not the mother, the wife, and the help me, we are to, you know, lovingly, gently, just as Christ would have us to be, to win, you know, to, to help our husbands improve. Everybody should be moving towards salvation, moving heavenward. And if it's not heavenward, then that means there's been a breach. That means that we've gone outside of God's will. And we have to remember that and whenever we go outside of God's will, you know, we are, we are really handing Satan the keys to our marriage. And so I wanted to say that point there. All right, so um, let me go back here. Let me go back here. So I want to go to Ephesians 5.22 since I've mentioned that. Now we know that the, the wife is, you know, is to be the help me to the husband. And, and there were to be, you know, one flesh. You know, they were to be one. The two shall become one. Ephesians 5.22 tells us this. 
Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Okay? That means that we don't have any business submitting or listening to or being submissive to any other man, so to speak. And the reason why I want to say that is because then, even in the case of uh, those who who have parents, when the two leave and cleave, when the husband leaves and cleaves to his, his wife, their two are to start their life together. Okay, I'm mentioning this because of where I'm going. The only man that the wife should really be listening to is the, the husband. Yes, you may, you may get some counsel from here and there. You may talk to your, your, your parents if you have those or different places. You know, people, you may be able to, 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 to hear, but no one should be on the, no one has the right on the inside of your marriage because God said that the two should become one. And then we know that counsel talks about how, it, it's a sacred circle around every marriage. It is really the secret. My husband calls it the secret sacred circle around every marriage. I'm going back to that because that, that means that everything that goes on in between those two, it shouldn't be repeated or stated outside of that union. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as it is fit in the Lord. And that's where I was speaking or alluding to before when I said as long as it's a godly spouse. Because if it's not godly spouse, that means that they're not leading you in the right direction. But as a woman who is married to uh, what I believe God has blessed me with a godly husband, you know, I can tell you the blessings that come from being submissive, the blessings that come from listening to my husband, because I know that God is the one that's leading him. And, you know, we are to trust that God will be the one or the, he will send the Holy Spirit to convict on certain circumstances. What do I mean by that? What I mean is if there happens to be, because you still are two, the two are still separate individual people, but you're coming together, two lives blending and coming together. You're not going to always agree. There may be times that one may want to say, you know, go left, and the other one wants to go right. But in the case of that, what does God want us to do? God wants us as women to submit to our husbands especially, uh, you know, if they know that their husband is, is godly, their husband is striving. When I mean godly, th- their husband is striving to live the life that God has called us to be, to, to live. First Peter 3, 1 tells us that likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. So here we see in the case that there may be a spouse, in this case the husband, you know, um, may not be converted or, you know, living not as a, the life of, that God would call, has called, you know, us to be to be living, it's still saying in that case, and this, this also almost touched on what we were talking about in the previous studies. It says, likewise, ye wives be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, talking about the husband, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. So we see that our, we have an influence, sisters, we have an influence over our um, our husbands. Even though we're to be submissive, we still, God has still given us something. He's blessed us with the ability to reach. Remember, we're supposed to help um, 
help them to make it to heaven. We're supposed to influence them for the, to, to, to uh, make decisions, you know, that would please the Lord. And so in the case that a husband may not be on where they should be spiritually, God would have us to remain there in those marriages, and he would have us to pray, yes, but also making sure that our conversations are lifting, pointing him to, to heaven, pointing him to Christ. And by the fruit of, you know, he shall know that you, there's something different about you. And, and, and ultimately, you know, by God's grace, will, that will be a star on your crown. So I further go into 1 Corinthians because I, I wrote a, a list of things down here that I wanted to touch on. I go into 1 Corinthians 7.14 where it says, For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife. So that goes into what we just said before, okay? The, the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife can also be sanctified by the husbands because, you know, it can be the other way around. Even though I'm speaking about the wife, it can be, you know, either way. The wife can be un, un, ungodly and the husband could be godly. But I, the Lord is saying here that we are to win our spouses by our conversations. This, in essence, would be helping, being the help me as wives. We would be helping our, our husband to make decisions that will glorify God. It says here that unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband, else were your children unclean, but now are they holy. So even with that, those that have children, because of this act, because of this action uh, where the wife is, you know, talking and speaking, doing all that she knows to do by God's grace, praying and by faith. You don't just leave it in prayer. We have to act, you know, by faith, move out. We have to work alongside with our prayers that we're praying on behalf of our husband. But those that have children, because, see, the children are watching, looking on. For examples, we are examples to our children on what a godly uh, relationship should look like. Um, the problem today in most cases is that there's not many examples, you know, of what a godly relationship should be. And so then we have uh, children or youth growing up and making, you know, the, the same decisions or I should say a decision that um, they see in the home uh, because they haven't had a great example. But I know that God is in the business of restoration. God, that's the plan of redemption. God wants us to restore that which he has instituted from the beginning of time. And so if we could work along with the spirit of the Lord, then we will be doing a great work. We know that marriages and families and the Sabbath is under attack. But God just wants us to let self be laid aside. And to be quite honest with you, if, if pride was laid aside for five minutes, counsel tells us, then it would solve a multitude of things. But the issue the issue is pride, and I have to tell you that over the years, uh, just being submissive, being to the you know just trusting that God is the one that's the the, the captain of this ship, <laughs> so to speak, um, you know it has truly been a blessing in our marriage. It has truly been a blessing in our home. Our children are able to see the unity and not division, because we are choosing Christ's method alone, Christ's method alone over 
itself. And the reason why I say Christ's method alone, many of you know, uh, medical missionaries, because as we look to seek to restore health back in the humanity, we have to first restore also, uh, why not use Christ's method alone to restore our marriages or our families? So it's the same it's the same God, it's the same Jesus. And so his method alone is is what we should be following. It says here that who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above ruby. You know, um, and as we were to go further in to that chapter, we would see that the virtuous woman does several things. She works with her hands. You know, she's, she's you know, helping to uh, make things, make, make clothing, you know. Um, I'm trying to pull this up here because I, I do want to go into it a little bit. And so I'm going to go here. Proverbs, those of who, who have their Bible, please turn to Proverbs chapter 31. <clears throat> the reason why this is important because, you know, this is also a part of being a wife. It's also a part of being a help me. Okay. I'll pull this up here. Okay, so um, as I'm trying to pull this up, something's wrong with my thing here. Okay, all right. So as we see here, it says that who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies. Okay, as we go further, it says, the heart of her husband doeth safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. I'm going to pause there. So her husband trusts the virtuous wife, the virtuous woman, the virtuous helpmeet, her husband. This is what the Bible is saying. Her husband can trust her, okay, so that he shall have no need of spoil. All right, no need to do to go to err or to go wrong or to do anything outside of the will of God. It says she will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. So, you know, the virtuous woman is godly. The virtuous woman is seeking to build up and to help uh, her husband, and and she will do him good. It says and not evil. You know, these these are not the stories, you know, or, or, you know, you have stories out there. You have different movies out there. As a matter of fact, we shouldn't even, as as believers, be looking at these things because if we be looking at, if we're looking at these these movies, then by beholding we become changed. And we're wondering why our marriages or our families are not in order. So I, I just want to share that. That's one of the things that we had to cut out you know, as we came into this message, cut out watching the screen because there's absolutely nothing on there that can help ready us to meet our Lord and Savior in peace. We will not be ready if we're watching TV or movies. Instead, we should be really reading the Bible, reading God's word and what his ideal is for, for his children. It says, she seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. So she's willing to help in whatever, wherever her help is needed, you know, whether it means to make clothing or whether it means to work and make food, whether it means to clean and keep the home, wherever it is that her hands are needed, she is willing to use her hands to help. It also says she is like the merchant ship. She bringeth her food from afar. So will there be times where maybe the the husband may have gone out to work um, and didn't have food or is maybe out in the, the, you know, working in the field and maybe hungry, you know, and without even asking, you know, or wondering, 
just to be able to be willing to go and take some food to her husband, knowing he's hardworking out there on a nice, hot, sunny day. You know, um, this is what God is calling the virtuous, calling us to be, calling us to do, to look after our husband, to, you know, to take care of our husband. This is taking care of our husband. Okay, because he's the provider. He's going to be doing what God called him to do. We should be doing what God called us to do. All right? So taking food and water and uh, whatever is needed, you know, or something, anything that you can think of that could help uh, the husband. If he's out there and, 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 you know, thirsty, why not give him something to drink or knowing it's a hot day? You know, why not think of them? Because let me tell you, even if he doesn't want that drink or if he's not ready for that food, guess what that communication, that action is doing? That action is sowing seeds of love. That action is sowing seeds of care. And see, love is awakened by love. And so as you, the woman takes on this role uh, as the wife, and of being the help me, you're helping your husband. God is pleased, and so is your spouse. Your husband is pleased. You know, it's sowing seeds of love. And so we know that whatever you sow, whatever a man soweth, we told that he shall reap. So when we sow love, you will reap love. Okay? It says that she considereth a field and buyeth it with the fruit of her hands, she planted a, a vineyard. So she's a gardener. You know, she's, a, she's out there working with her hands, helping to make, uh, grow food for her family. This is what God is saying the virtuous woman is. She does these things. She girded her loins with strength and strengthened her arms. And I want to tell you that how she does that, we're told in uh, Ephesians chapter 6, to put on the whole armor. So this is the virtuous woman. The virtuous, wo- the virtuous woman is putting on the whole armor because she knows that the days are evil. She knows that the wicked one is seeking, you know, luring around, seeking whom he may devour. So she's godly. She is seeking the Lord, trusting God and not trusting herself. It says here, she perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. She's trusting God. <laughs> she layeth her hands to the spindle and her hands holdeth this staff. All right, we talked about making clothing. We talked about that. She stretches out her hand to the poor. So is God calling? Uh, should, the, should, the, should the wife also think of someone else other than herself or, or her family? Uh, absolutely. This is also, you know, that's service. God is calling us as wives to show and be examples to our, to our husbands, but also to our children who then will grow up to re- replicate what they've seen. And we want them to be missionaries. Every home should be a missionary. So she is showing her, uh, she is the heart of the family, so to speak. You know, a lot of times they say that, you know, the glue is the wife, and and, and it is so. The wife is the one that kind of helps, you know, the husband is the house band, but the wife is there to help, you know, uh, she's she's, um, putting out love, and she's the one that's, that's, you know, caring for everyone, the husband, the children, and she is the one that's, you know, the heart you know, the heart of the home, okay? And so she is showing, uh, she's the leader, so to speak, of being, being a missionary. That means that she's making food. You know, she knows that somebody may be low on food. You know, I've done this plenty of times, you know, know that somebody, and they don't even ask, but take something to someone because I I, I think that they could use it, and it just become a blessing. Then that's missionary work, even when no one asks, but you see that there's a need, okay, just to be a blessing and a light in the community. I have to tell you, it's been a blessing to be where we are, 
um, you know, I was able to share the gospel message by taking bread, uh, banana bread, to our neighbors. You know, um, they didn't ask me, but taking it to them anyway. Why? Because it's that is the gospel in action. You know, being able to to see that there may be a need or just to let someone know, hey, I'm here. You know, God is looking for his light. He said we should be the light of the world. And so we should be striving to do that. I want to say that verse 21 talks about that she is not afraid of snow for her household, for all the household are clothed with scarlet. She's not afraid. Her husband is known in the gates. When he sitteth among the elders of the land, that means that, you know, when people see, you know, uh, her husband is known. Why do you think her husband is known? Because he comes from a family or has a wife or has a family that is striving. That, that's something different about them. It's something different about him when he goes on his job. It's something different about her. When they go to church, people see something different. When they go out in the community, people take note to them. These things are real. These things are real. The husband is known in the gates. You know, and it says when he sitteth among the elders of the land, she, he is known. I don't want uh, to say every word in this particular chapter, but I just want to say that when she openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. That is the virtuous wife, and that is the godly wife. And so God is looking for our, our conversation, our tongues, to be pleasing in thy sight. God is looking for us to raise. This, this is not an unreasonable or unrealistic thing. God is showing us the way. We know that thy word is a lamp unto thy feet and a light unto thy path. And, you know, by reading God's word and striving to live this life, praying and striving, this is how we overcome. And this is how we become what God has called us to be. I can tell you that outside of this, we will never make, we will never become what God has called us to be. And, you know, as I heard Sister Carmen mention earlier about our family and different things, and contrary to what many may think, you know, we have made a choice. We've made a decision. I've made a decision. I've made a decision to be, one, committed to God. I made a decision, you know, I have children to be committed to my husband and be committed to my children. I made a decision that if we're going to live this life and I'm going to be a Christian, then I'm going to do it Christ's method, Christ's way, and I'm going to strive. I know I don't know everything. I don't claim to know everything. And, you know, but by God's grace, I trust that God is with me as I'm by faith moving out. I am striving to do. And we're told that by their fruit, Ye shall know them. And so I want to encourage, you know, somebody on this line because, you know, there may be something here that you may have heard and you may be saying that's unrealistic, that's not doable. You know, I don't think that that's real. But God is real. And God has mapped out a plan for for all of us. He's shown us the way. You know how you pull a map out? And, you you know, back in the day anyway, before you had these GPSs and, and technology, but you pull the map out and you, you know, go find your way. To, that's, I, I, that's how I remember traveling. We would travel and we would just pull the map out and drive. <laughs> we didn't have Google Maps or anything like that. But if we needed to know how to get to a place, we pull the map out, and I'm just here to share with you that the map 
is God's word. The map is also God is counsel. Because God has told us, you know, that the testimony are also what he is looking for his people to have and to keep. And so as God's believing people, as God's remnant people, you know, I want to encourage us to read what God has put here for us so that our eyes may be open, that we may see and be able to live this life. He told us that because we know that Laodicea is is blind. She does not even know her weakness. She doesn't realize that she thinks she's good. She doesn't realize that, that, that she's not living up to the standard that God would have her to live. But if we're reading God's word along with the counsel, then we'll, our eyes will be open and we'll be able to see our true self. We won't be blind. And so I'm encouraging you. I'm encouraging all those that are listening that if, you know, you may be in a marriage, you may not be or be looking to, to, to get into one, but if you're looking to get into, you know, a marriage, just make sure that it's, you understand all of what God has called it, you know, called wives to be. Help me. It's a very solemn time in these, in these last days to be married, um, you know, and to lift up that standard. It can be a curse, or I should say, yeah, it can be a curse if you're not living it according to God, God's will or his ideal. Marriage, you know, I can't say can be. Marriage is a curse if you're not living it according to God's ideal. So I just want to encourage those that are looking to get married those that are even in the marriage. You could be in the mar- in the, in your marriage and think that, well, it's just too gone out the way, it's no not restorable. You either believe God or you don't. Cuz God he can restore. And so if that is you on this line, you know, I want to encourage you to to go, really go into a prayer and go into a fast. Sometimes things come by fasting and praying. And sometimes we have to do that to get our clear understanding or clearness. And so if that is you, I encourage you to go into a fasting, going into a prayer, and sometimes mouths outside of that need to be all hushed. What do I mean by that? If you have somebody that's telling you, you know, that's telling you something about your marriage or they shouldn't do this or they shouldn't do that, you know, they have no business. They have no right to give a word on what should be and what should not be when it comes to your marriage with your spouse. As a matter of fact, I would encourage you to stop talking about your spouse with any outside influences. And the only reason why I'm saying that is because, well, I'll say this. Sometimes marriages are in trouble, and the reality is that you do need some outside help. But in that case, I would encourage you to really, you know, go get, seek the professional, like talk to somebody that you, that both of you have agreed upon, um, and if it's not, if one of you don't agree, you can go get some help for yourself. Work on you and trust God, but trust his plan. And when you trust God's plan, then you are in his hand. So I leave that here. There's a whole lot more I could really speak to. I could speak more about the immature, you know, know, not doing God's will, but why look at the things that we shouldn't be doing. That's point. Let's look at the stuff that we should be looking at. 
Because remember, Peter, you know, he was walking on water. As he looked to Christ, he was all right. But the moment he took his eyes off of Jesus, that's when he started to sink, and he sunk. So we don't want to sink on this line. We want to look to Christ and look at God's ideal, not God's, uh, you know, uh, not something that goes against God's ideal. We want to look at his ideal for his children. So I pray that uh, that there, this has been a blessing. Um, I pray that it, it, is, it is a blessing. Um, I may have tripped up my words a little bit earlier because I'm not really a speaker like my husband. But <laughs> uh, I pray that, you know, eventually I got into do it a little bit. But I pray that, that something that I may have said may have resonated, uh, may have stuck out. Um, but I want to say this lastly, and that is this, because it kind of goes into the music for this evening that what I realize is that, and I don't want to say most of us, all of us, all of us need a change of heart. All of us need to, a change of heart. We need to ask the Lord to create within us a clean heart and to renew a right spirit within us because that's really what it is. It's ourselves our own ideas of what we think, what should be, what shouldn't be, and then we start going into faith. And I know that, I mean, not faith, feeling. And I know that one thing that Brother um, Elder Devon Finley always says is that faith is as far as it is from feeling as it is from the east, from the west. So I just invite you all to pray and do some soul searching But really, when you pray, ask the Lord to change your perspective and to receive his will, that your your will will be in line with with his will. That concludes um, what I'm going to say. I'm going to go ahead on and pray at this time. Loving Father, I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to share, Lord, uh, some little key points, things that you have blessed me with as the wife and as the help me, these principles, Lord, just by acknowledging and, in, and practicing. You have blessed me as a wife and as a help me. And, Lord, I have not arrived. I'm still striving. I'm still, still striving. But I thank you so much, Lord, for what you have done and what you are doing. I want to pray over the women that will hear this feed, dear Lord. I pray for the wives. Lord, you know each one down to the very numbers of hair on their heads. You knew each one before you formed them in their mother's womb. Lord, I'm asking that you restore the the broken marriages Lord, and I ask, Lord, that you would help help them yield to you, to your will, whatever your ideal will is. I pray, Lord, for the even the husband. I pray, Lord, that you would also help them to be the priest and help them to be the protector and provider as you've called them to be. And so, Lord... Um, As we continue on this journey, Lord, help us to lift up that standard and restore the marriage, the marriage union, as you would have it to be, as you have instituted from the beginning of time. This is my earnest prayer, and when it's all said and done, may we be found on the sea of glass. Glass. It's my prayer, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You guys were going to sing tonight, too? I'm not sure. Oh, yeah. Um, This is actually a song that I felt impressed to sing. Um, It's going to be me tonight. Um, The Lord has blessed me um, 
with these, this song that I, um, and I just want you all to be, to just listen to the words to this song. It's entitled, Change Me Now. Principles to really affirm 
the home and the wife especially, uh, her role and her function as she seeks to make the home this, as an inspiration says the sun is fireside. <laughs> So praise, thank you, Sister Erica, for um, your delivery tonight. We definitely appreciate that, um, especially the wife and the wife to be are those that be gonna become that wife one day. I pray that that would be uh, uh, encouragement because so often times we don't think that you know we really trying to um, prepare teenagers for that role and that's exactly what we should be doing not discouraging them but encouraging them so that when they they come to that decision because we have to think about it even earlier than we normally thought it was